All right, so uh, today we're going to continue with the higher poly modeling uh, process. And this is obviously taken a little bit further than where we left off last week, um, but there's not a whole lot new here, or at least as far as new techniques. Um, you know, this, is, this was done almost the exact same way that the main body was done. Um, this probably the trickiest bit, but that was a circle that I extruded a few times uh, and then extruded the side faces out. And then these last few loops, I right click loop tools and uh, made it circle. Again, if you don't have loop tools on by default, go to edit preferences, go to the add ons, search loop, and just make sure the loop tools box is checked. That's all you have to do. It's already bundled with Blender, it's just not on by default. So. Um, there's a couple things I want to talk about today. The, the biggest thing is going to be using the subdivision surface modifier um, or subsurface modifier for, for short. Uh, I also will talk about um, adding some additional detail with a shrink wrap modifier and uh, uh, what's the other thing? Oh yes, uh, adding some, some curves. So if I turn on the reference images here and go to the front view and wireframe. You see these pipes that kind of curve along? Uh, I've got a pretty easy way to do that. So I will demonstrate that as well, um, as well as this bracket right up here that kind of conforms to the shape. So it's a couple of kind of tricky bits, but I think I can show you some, some ways to do it in, a, in an easy, uh, attainable way that doesn't take too long, which is even better. Um, so first, even before I do the subsurface, I just want to um, show one thing that I think I may have skipped over earlier in the semester. And particularly when you're working with multiple reference images, uh, it can be helpful to see multiple views at once. And yes, you can go up to view, area, toggle quad view, um, but sometimes you don't want to see four views at once. Sometimes you just want to see like two. So you can go back up into that view menu area, you do a horizontal split like that. You can also do that with a vertical split, um, but you can be even more custom about it in a faster way. So if you move your mouse to the corner of basically any panel in Blender, you can even do it over here in the properties and outliner, you'll, the, you'll see the cursor will turn into a plus. And then as you click and drag, if I drag down, it's gonna split it horizontally. And if I drag left and right, it's going to split it vertically. And then from there, you can go into multiple views, however you want. You can see I can be in solid in one, in wireframe in another. Maybe I want to be in the top view up here, and I want to be in the front view here, and I want to be in the side view here. You have that full control. You can divide them as, as many times as you want. You can, uh, if you hover the mouse between them, you'll see it turn into this symbol, and you can resize them as you would like. And then when you want to join them back together, uh, you move the mouse back to the center. And you want to be kind of just off the center on whichever side that you want to keep. So if I want to keep this one, I'm going to, I'm going to be just to the left of it. And then I'm going to click and drag back. And you can see that little arrow shows up telling you it's going to merge that way. Uh, and if you, you can actually merge both ways here. But I'm going to merge that way. And then I can merge that back up. So uh, that will be... A pretty useful thing as you get used, uh, as you get comfortable with it. It's a very fast way to organize your viewport. So that's first. Second is a subsurface modifier. So I said last week that we're using a process called subdivision uh, modeling. All right, and that relies on a subdivision surface modifier. So let's talk about exactly what that does. And I'm not going to worry about the gun right now because that's a little bit more complicated. So I'm just going to select everything and hit H. Nope, not G. H to hide it. And uh, I've got my 3D cursor centered. So if it's not centered, you can hit Shift C to center it. And I'm going to add in a plane. Okay. So when you add in a plane, it's really just one quad. It's a face. It's just four vertices connected by edges and one face. That's the simplest unit of Blender you can really get, or of three outside of a triangle, but we're not working in triangles. So I'm going to go to Add Modifier and Subdivision Surface, and by default, it's going to 
look like this. So let's talk about the options that we have. Uh, up top, and this is true with all modifiers, but just to reiterate, we have uh, four buttons. We have one that is render. So this is saying, do you want this modifier to be active when you render? Almost certainly yes, otherwise why are you adding it? Um, the second one is display. So do you want this to actually display in the viewport? The third one is edit mode. Do you want this to be visible in edit mode? So maybe in object mode you want to see the smoothed version, but uh, in edit mode you don't, so you can enable and disable that. And then lastly is on cage. And what that does is with that off, you're still manipulating the vertices where they actually exist. Um, this will move them to where they get transformed by the modifier. Usually I'm going to keep that off because I want to know where the actual vertices are so I'm not intersecting faces um, without my knowledge. So that's up top. Uh, we've got these up and down arrows, which when you have multiple modifiers, let's say I add in a, I don't know, solidify modifier, uh, these arrows will move the position up and down in the stack. Blender will apply the top modifier first and then on down. So order does matter with modifiers. Then if you want to get rid of a modifier, just click the X. Um, and then all the way over here on the left, you've got this little arrow, which will collapse it. As your stacks get more elaborate, uh, it can be helpful to collapse some of the ones you're not actively um, adjusting. Below that, we have apply and copy. Uh, those do exactly what you want. So if you just want to copy the modifier, just click that. It'll make a duplicate. Uh, and apply will, oh, you can't do it in edit mode, but apply will actually apply it. And now this is where the vertices actually are. So um, generally, you don't want to apply a modifier unless you absolutely have to. Don't just apply it by default. Just you know, wait as long as you can so that you would maintain that flexibility. Uh, OK, next we have Catnell Clark and Simple. This is an either or option. You go into edit mode, you'll be able to see the difference. So Catmill Clark is this kind of the default and, and the expected uh, behavior where it adds, it's basically adding a subdivision and smoothing it, but it's doing it in a way that is dynamic and adjustable and non-destructive. If you go to simple, it's, if I turn on edit cage, you can't even see it here. Um, it's not, if I, I'm going to wireframe, turn off optimal display. There we go. So if we go to simple, you can see it's adding those subdivisions, but it's not smoothing it out. Uh, but 99% of the time, we're going to keep it on Catmull Clark. Next, we have the subdivisions. This is actually like the main setting here. And this is how many, how many subdivisions it's going to do. So default render is two and viewport is one, which means it's only going to show you one subdivision, but when you hit render, it will actually do it a second time. Um, in the viewport, I usually like to see two, um, and I might sometimes render three. You can always temporarily move your, say if you want to render three, you can move your viewport up to three and just kind of see what that's going to look like and then bring it back down. Because as you start, especially with higher density, higher poly objects, as you start bringing that subdivision number up, it's going to slow down your scene. So be mindful of that. You can also turn on optimal display, uh, which will just get rid of extra subdivisions, which, again, the more complicated meshes, this is a very useful thing to not overwhelm just the, you know, the viewport so you know what's going on. Um, quality is accuracy of vertex position. Uh, let's see, options, smooth, keep corners. And all those defaults, I don't really change. It's really, I adjust viewport render, and I turn on optimal display. That's about it. So that's what it does. And you can see what it what a, a subsurface modifier can do is it can take a square plane and turn that into more or less a circle. And we don't always want that. We just want smooth curves. We don't want very sharp, um, or we don't want, like, perfectly round. So... Um, what this necessitates is something called, uh, sometimes they're called control loops, sometimes they're called support edges or holding edges. Um, and what they do is it's extra edge loops that their sole purpose is to basically maintain the shape with a subsurface modifier. 
Um, so if I add an edge loop here and slide it over, you can see that this is starting to be more squared off again. I add another one here. There we go. I can go into solid view. Okay, so you can see with control edges and without the rather dramatic difference that we get. Um, now, you might be thinking, well, if we have to add edge loops back, why do we even use a subdivision surface modifier in the first place? Um, and that's going to be easier to show on a cube. So I'm going to get rid of this plane. I'm going to add in a default cube and add in that subsurface modifier again. Uh, I'll bring the viewport back up to 2. Okay, you can say we basically have a sphere at this point. I'm going to go into edit mode. So if we were modeling a cube just by default, and let me turn that off uh, for a second. If we were modeling a cube when we got to this point, uh, in, unless we were going for like low poly game stuff, we don't want this because the, these edges are like razor sharp and there's no real definition. Um, if I go into like material preview, you can see the edges aren't really catching any light. It's just a hard transition and it looks fake. It doesn't look like it has any weight to it. Um, and so with a subdivision surface and some edge loops, and I'll just do it, I'm going to add three. So I'll make this corner pretty sharp. Uh, now what we're doing, and let me also, I don't love that. I'm going to do, oops, not that. Let's go with that. Okay. Now that edge is catching some light, and now it looks like it really has some heft, some weight, some volume to it. Okay. Uh, you'll also see that we're getting this faceting here. All right, you'll see all the individual faces. Um, once we start adding subsurface modifiers uh, in object mode, if you right click and shade smooth, or with the object selected, shade smooth, that's going to get rid of that. Okay. So it's going to be a much smoother thing. You still see some banding here, and that's where, you know, again, having some, some edge loops is going to get rid of that. Okay, and so now we have this much more pleasing cube than we did before. All right, and so that's with, with hard edges. Um, I should also note that the closer the edge is, or the, clo the closer the control loop is to the edge, the sharper it's going to be. So if I slide this back, and we slide this back, and we slide this back, now it's a much softer transition. Okay, so you have that control over what that edge actually looks like. Okay, uh, I'll show you one more example here. That's going to be with a cylinder. All right, I'll just use the default and I'll scale it vertically a little bit. I'm going to add some edge loops. I'm going to take this middle face loop and I'm going to extrude it out. Right click to keep it the same spot and just scale it. Shift Z, all right? So I have this really basic shape, all right? So if I add our subdivision surface modifier here, uh, one, you can see what the problem is with an n-gon is you get this awful thing. Also shade smooth, optimal display, set it to two. Whoops, two, okay. All right, so this really distorts the form that we're going for. Again, this is where control loops come in. And there's a couple of ways that we can add them. I'm going to turn this off in edit mode. One way is we can just manually go in and control or command R, add the edge loops, and there you know, we get the uh, much closer to what we're going for. I'll add one up here so that stops being weird. OK. Uh, at, on the top face here, one, this shouldn't be an end gone, but if it, even if it is, you just hit I to inset it, you're basically adding a control loop all the way around, right? And that's going to look better. Um, there's a faster way to do it. If I come down here to the bottom and I select this edge loop, you right click and we've got loop cut and slide, which is what we've been doing to add edge loops. But right below it, we have offset edge slide. Shift command R is the shortcut, but if you click on that, it's going to add two edge loops at the same time. All right, so that's going to speed up this process quite a bit. 
Um, now you'll notice that they're not even. If you want them to be even, if you look up here on the top left, we've got, uh, you can see my mouse kind of, there we go. It says E even is off. So if I hit, whoops, too far, there we go. If I hit E, now they're gonna be even. Uh, and I can hit F to flip, depending on which edge I want them to be even to. Okay, so now they're evenly spaced. And now I have that. So same result, a little bit faster. Uh, and then I have this centerpiece, which if I want it to keep it round, I can. Like, that's perfectly fine. Um, but I can also do the same thing. And I can actually select multiple edge loops. Okay. Then right-click, offset edge slide. Whoop, there we go. And hit E to keep it even. It'll make this a little bit rounder. Something like that, maybe. And there we go. Okay, so a lot of control. Um, generally, you don't want to do this right away. You want to finish blocking out your shapes, defining all the forms, and then when you're ready and you have the shape where you want it, then you can add your subsurface modifier, start adding edge loops. Because um, from here, if you need to make any drastic changes to your model, uh, the easiest way is probably going to be to select those edge loops, those control loops that you added, X and dissolve those edges, and now you've got that simple mesh again that you can go back and edit and then re-add the uh, edge loops as necessary. Come on, command shift E. No. What is it? It's shift, com oh, shift command R, excuse me. Wrong thing. There we go. And hit E to make it even. So. This newfound knowledge and apply it to the gun. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to hit Alt-H to unhide everything. And hit 1 to go into front view. Um, all right, let's 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 talk about... No, actually, let's we'll come back to that here in a second. Uh, I'm going to turn off my reference layer. And I'm just going to grab this center of the gun body. Right, just this main section. I'm going to hit number pad slash. Uh, a couple times until I go into local view. Okay, so this kind of cleans up my viewport so I can focus on the one part that I want to make adjustments to. And we're just going to add some control loops. So I'm going to add a modifier, subsurface. I'm going to set my viewport to 2. I'm going to turn on optimal display. I might even set my render to 3. It's not going to matter, um, but eventually I'd probably do that anyway. Also, in object mode, I'm going to right-click and shade smooth. Okay, so here's what it looks like with no control loops. And you can see, like, if we look back here, these little kind of fins rounded off really nice, and maybe we want to keep those. But there are other places where we're really losing some detail, and we almost certainly want to get that back. And so that's where these control loops are going to come into play. So... Uh, I'm going to turn off the edit cage for now. So I'll click this third button here, this edit mode uh, option on the subsurface modifier. Turn that off just while I apply these edge loops. At least at the beginning so I can kind of see where I'm going. Otherwise, if I have that on with all this smoothing, it can be kind of tricky to see exactly where that edge is. Right? You can see if I add an edge loop here, um, well, I guess when it smooths it works, but um, for now anyway, I'm going to keep that off. So I'm going to use that offset edge loop tool. because That's going to be the fastest way because I want to add an edge loop on all of these. So I'm going to click Alt-Left-Click on this edge. Shift-Alt-Left-Click on all these other edges. All right, you don't have to do this all at once, but I'm going to. All right, so basically select all these vertical edges. I don't want to be in face mode because, I, or vertex mode because I don't want to select the faces. Because if you select the faces, it's also going to select these cross edges. I only want to select these vertical edges. Okay. Once I have those selected, right-click, offset edge slide. And then I'm going to hit E to keep it even. There we go. Or something like that. 
I don't want it to go too close together. Otherwise, it's defeating the purpose. Something like that. And I can hit tab to go into object mode and see the results of this process. OK. Uh, we can take it a little bit easier here. Like, So if we turn on our reference, go into front view, wireframe, you can see that this edge is supposed to be a little bit sharper. OK, so I'll select that edge, right click, offset, edge slide. And I'll put this a little bit E to make it even. But I'll make it a little bit, uh, maybe go a little bit closer. All right. And go back into object mode and solid. And there we go. Okay, so that's really the process here. Uh, if I go to the to the fins back here, like I said, I, maybe I like these this roundness. I'm still going to want to add edge loops to these inside uh, parts because I want those insides to be sharp. But I'll keep I'll keep the outsiders around. So I'll just do the these first three for now. Selected, right click, offset edge loop, and E to keep it even. Go something like that. All right, so there you can see that it gives a really kind of pleasing sharpness and then kind of contrasting roundness there versus without it, it just looks soft and weird. So uh, that's going to be the process for this part. So I'm going to just pause it while I do this. Uh, and then we'll kind of rejoin as we move on to other parts. As I'm going through and uh, adding all of these, there we go, all of these uh, control edges, uh, this, when I, when I keep saying that we don't need a whole lot of geometry and we want to keep it simple, it's because of this process. Um, and hopefully this shows how little geometry you actually need to get um, a, a good smooth shape and smooth transition. All right, so there's not a whole lot going on here, even actually even back here with this shape where we have kind of round on top and sharp in, 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 the, in the recesses. There's not a whole lot of edges. I mean, before I added these control loops, it was one edge on the, on the inside, one on the outside. Um, so even as we get to more complicated forms here, you can see that this little amount of geometry is enough to get us where we want to be. That there's the temptation might be to add, take both of these, and add some edge loops. And you certainly can. Uh, slide that in. You can, but if we look in here on this kind of vertical face, that's more than we really need. So instead, I might do this by hand. I'll just add an edge loop there. I'll just add, probably don't even need one in there. And I'll add one in there. And then we can jump back out to object mode and, and check that. If it still feels a little bit soft, maybe we add one in there. And we select this edge, double tap G to slide it. To slide it in a little bit more. Okay, so we can control it that way. Uh, I think I, I like that roundness. Yeah, so I'll keep going and then uh, unpause it. Quickly add uh, multiple edge loops or, or multiple control loops is if you add two here and then right click to keep them in the center and then just scale them away from each other. So SX, uh, then you can keep those evenly spaced in a, in a pretty quick way. The tip here, um, it's not an easy way to add an edge loop all the way around. So if I just select all of these faces. I can just hit I to inset them. And that'll give me a face loop all the way around. Keep that sharp. So that's it for that main part. Um, I don't need any more edge loops than that. Uh, if you want to kind of another way to check the smoothness of the object, you can start playing around with some of the viewport options. Uh, and I did this briefly without talking about it, but I'll actually show you why I did. If we go up here to the top right, top right here, if I click on this little arrow, um, we've got some viewport shading options. So by default, we're using a studio setup and just this gray um, pattern. And what you can do 
one thing you can do is if you click on this little ball, um, we've got different lighting options. So the, the viewport material stays the same. This doesn't affect the actual material of your object. All right, if I, if I were to apply uh, to go to materials and I give this a, just a blue, right? Let's not make it so garish though. Let's kind of dial that back a little bit. Maybe something like that. Mm. Maybe a green. Okay, we'll go with that. So I give it that color and then hit Z and go into material preview. And you see it's that color, right? But, Ed, so this viewport shading option does not affect that. Okay, I can change this lighting, say maybe to this, if I want to see kind of the edge highlights. And I can go back into my viewport, or my, my material preview, and you can see that green is still there. So you can change the lighting if that's going to suit your needs. Um, but you can also, if you go to Matte Cap, which I don't remember what it stands for, it's Material Capture maybe. You've got a bunch of different options. So you'll see probably a lot of times people use something like this for sculpting. It just, um, it shows contours a little bit better. So you can see how the surface is flowing. Uh, another one that's popular is the one I was actually just on, this kind of lighter clay material. Um, if you know you're going to do something metallic, you can use this metallic option, right, and get a kind of a cool preview, of, especially for a ray gun. Like, this is awesome. And you can look at these highlights and the shapes of these highlights, and that'll help you kind of determine how smooth your surface is. Uh, you can also use this car paint. Again, we'll give you another really cool preview of what the surface is like and if things are as smooth as, as you want them to be. Um, you can also go to a flat view. I don't ever use that, but that's there as well. Um, if you want a material preview, I don't know, the material preview is just the, uh, the lighting options. This will actually use your materials. So you can still see whatever you've applied to it if you want, um, but for kind of basic things, um, the mat cap is a really nice option to utilize. So we've applied those edges. Um, we can come down here to the grip and do the same sort of a process. So right click shade smooth, uh, go to our modifiers, add in a subsurface, change the quality to two, turn on optimal display. I'll turn it off in edit mode for now. And it's gonna be the same thing. I'm just gonna go through all of uh, these edges that, that are defining these insets. All right, and I'm going to apply some control loops. All right, so select them all. Uh, Shift Command R is the shortcut again. Hit E to keep it even, and then there we go. Something like that. Go to edit mode and check that. Make sure that's still looking good. All right. To a couple of trickier pieces. We've got this grip here. Um, and again, this is going to kind of reinforce why I was picky about this edge flow last week. I'm going to add in one edge loop here. I'm going to hit E to keep it even. And you see this little red dot? I'm going to hit F to flip that so it's on the inside. And we'll add an edge loop in here. Again, add the edge loop, and while I can slide it, I'm going to hit E to keep it even. You see that red dot is on the, on the outside, which is what I want. All right, I'll add one here. E to keep it even. Do the same thing here. I'll add an edge loop there. Now, as you're adding these, um, you need to be careful about it gives me the, the edge flow that I want here, but you can see like over here, it terminates in a place that I don't need that detail. So I'm gonna select these edges and double tap G and just slide them away just to, to even them out a little bit. I'm gonna keep this here so that stays sharp. Um, you know, same thing here, select this vertex, double tap G and just slide it away for all these areas that I don't need that density so we can keep it 
even where we can. Something like that. Okay. Then here I can add that edge loop in. You see I haven't actually added the uh, subsurface modifier yet. Um, as you do this more and more, you'll get a really good idea of where this needs to be. Also, you can see as I'm trying to add this, it doesn't complete the circle, which means I've got something wrong here. So let's figure that out real quick. And then the thing that I have wrong is that this is an n-gon, which is obviously a bad thing. So I'm going to hit number pad slash to go into local view. And I'm just going to bring up my knife tool. I'm just going to cut straight back like that. Hit return to confirm it. And then I can, we'll cut from there to there, hit return. There we go. Now that's all quads again. So just add that cut there. Oh, actually, no, because now I'm still not going to have that edge loop that I wanted. That's not a thing that I want. That's weird. So let's fix that in a different way. So I'm going to undo. Oops. So I'm going to still make that first cut. I'll go back into local view here. I'm going to still make this first cut. I'm going to hit 1 to go into front view. And I'm going to tap 8 on the number pad just to look kind of down on it a little bit. There we go. So we'll add this, we'll say like here. And we'll go back. All right. So instead of going this way, I'm going to join these up this way. So I'm going to select those two vertices, hit F. Okay, so that's going to keep my edge flow in there. Uh, and then what I can do is I'll select these vertices, double tap G, slide those back a little bit. These, I'm going to double tap G. I'm going to slide them all the way just so they kind of flatten out. Let me zoom in here so you can see that a little bit better. So you can see how kind of they're skewed a little bit. I don't want that. So double tap G, slide them all the way over, and then double tap G again. So there we go. So I slide back. So now it's quad. It's not super pretty. I might even, in front view, so one on the number pad, kind of move that over just to try to keep that a little less gross. I still don't love it, but we're just going to go with it. Now I can add in my edge loop, which still isn't working. Why? What I did wrong is. When I connected these two, I just connected them with an edge. I didn't actually cut the face. So I'm going to select this edge. I'm going to delete it. Then I'm going to hit K to use the knife to actually cut that edge. Hit return. Now those are two separate faces. Now I can add in my edge loop. Hit E to keep it even. F to flip it. There we go. OK, so a little bit of troubleshooting there. Um, Hopefully that comes in handy. And oh, let's see, you can see right here, I don't love what's going on there. I'll slide that down, slide that down a little bit. OK. So once I have that, now we can add our subsurface modifier, go to two optimal display, right click and shade smooth. And there we go, we have a nice smooth part. Okay, get out of local view. So it's going to be the same sort of thing all over. Um, come up here. See up here, we did we did these little insets here. Um, but it's going to work the same way. So we'll just add an edge loop. I can do these maybe one at a time. We'll just add one on those surfaces. Because I think it's small enough that that'll be, in, that'll be fine. Zoom in here a little bit more so you can see. Okay, now when I add this edge loop, you'll notice that it does go all the way back here. So this is another instance where you might want to select the new edges. Oops, not that one, not that one, that one. 
and double tap G and, and slide those around and, and just to alleviate some of that. If it's a flat plane, you're not going to notice it, but if it's a uh, contoured surface, if it's rounded in any way, you'll definitely notice that. We'll add another one in here. Same sort of thing is, is taking time to smooth those out is really going to help. Um, another thing you can do, actually, uh, we'll slide that a little bit further. Actually, I'm going to undo that and re-add it. Hit E to make sure it's even. There we go. Okay. So another thing you can do in this sort of situation, let me add our subsurface modifier so we can see what's happening here, and we'll shade it smooth. Okay. So this is what we got, which is more or less what we want. Um, we can always grab these edges here. turn that off so I can if we want this to be rounded a little bit further we'll grab these corners make sure we have just the ones we want and we'll slide them away from this inside corner all right, so if I double tap G now, slide that away, that's going to help those stay more rounded. But now we have these three lines coming all the way back here. Um, and this is a great opportunity for, um, it's called edge termination or edge reduction. Uh, and this is a way that you can still keep this extra edge flow here. And I'm going to actually real quick undo that. Uh, double tap G, slide it again, but just hit E to keep it even. Okay. So edge termination is a way that you can keep this detail back here, but um, not have extra edges going all the way down here. And that's whenever you have three edges, you can just merge them into the center. So select those three, right click, merge vertices at center or at last whichever you want to do okay and then it's going to create a two triangles here so we're just going to dissolve this edge and now we have a quad Oops. and then if we do that all the way down I'll select those if I select them in that order I can um, merge at last but right click merge at last so now instead of having all these extra lines, we just have one edge, which again, whoops, I seem to have missed one. There we go. Uh, which is a lot easier to make adjustments and a lot easier for really everything. So it's good practice. I don't want to get too much into edge control at this point. Um, but if you are feeling overwhelmed by the number of edges and vertices, can look for these sorts of opportunities where otherwise these edges that that run towards the back end aren't doing anything anyway so we merge those at last okay and now we have this uh, sort of situation um, we can't yeah actually we probably can let's see merge at last yeah and that actually cleans up beautifully like I planned it, which I absolutely 100% definitely did. So um, that'll keep things nice and clean for you. All right, so there are two more things that I want to cover real quick. We're at 39 minutes. All right, I'm just going to power through these then. Um, the first is going to be when we have a bunch of different parts that we want to look like they all fit together, it can be tricky to actually get them to fit together. So, you know, one thing that you can do, and certainly I've done this a number of times in the past, is come in here in edit mode and oh, hit number pad period to focus on it. Just manually G, Z, oops, G, Z, there we go, and move it so that it kind of sits on the surface. Um, so that it actually looks like it is contouring to the surface. 
That's the manual way to do it. There is a faster way to do it. Well, probably an easier way. I don't know if it's necessarily faster. It can be faster. Um, and that's going to be using the shrink wrap modifier and uh, some vertex groups, which is, again, I think I've showed this before, but I'll do it again um, so it's recorded. I don't know if I recorded it before. But it, uh, it gives you a little bit more flexibility, and that way if you have to go back and modify shapes, everything still stays sitting together nicely. So here's how it's going to work. We want the bottom of this to snap to this main body so it looks like it's following the contour. To do that, I'm going to use uh, a shrink wrap modifier. So I know I've talked about the shrink wrap before, um, but we need to set our target. So what is this going to wrap around? And that's going to be, I'm going to just use this eyedropper and I'm going to click on this gun body. Okay. So what it does by default is it just brings everything down and snaps every vertex in our object to our target. And we don't want that. We want only some vertex vertices to snap to the target. And that's where vertex groups come into play. So I'm going to go into uh, vertex mode. I'm going to hit number pad slash so that I'm only looking or so that I'm, I'm in local view. And I'm going to select the bottom edge loop. Okay, this inside one, oops. This inside is one as well. I don't want all this stuff, so I'm going to hit C, bring up my circle, and middle click and drag to get rid of all the vertices I don't want to select. I said to get rid of all the vertices I don't want to select. Why won't you let me deselect? C, middle click and drag, there we go. Okay, so this is just being fickle. What is the point of wireframe if you don't actually see through the mesh, friend? There we go. Okay. So I only want these bottom vertices that, that would actually come in contact with the surface. Okay, so once I have only those selected, I'm going to go into this, click this green object data properties here. You'll actually, you'll see a, a vertex group already there. Just hit the minus to get rid of that because we're going to do this. We're going to start over on it. So normally you would see this. There are no vertex groups. So I'm going to hit, click the plus and add a group. I'm going to call this um, what I called the last one, body shrink wrap. And with the weight at 100, which is going to give it full influence, I'm going to click assign. Okay. So I've added those vertices to this group. You can check this by deselecting and then with that groups uh, highlighted, click select. And that will select only the vertices that are in that group. If it looks like this, then it's then you've done well. Okay, now we can get out of local view with the number pad slash. We'll go into uh, solid view. That's right, because it's shrink sh wrap. We go back to our modifier and set this vertex group to body shrink wrap. So once we do that, all the other vertices are going to stay where they're supposed to, and just these bottom vertices will move. Okay? So now what that means is that I can go to this main body, and let's say I want a little divot to happen right here. Well, we'll say here. I can scale this down, and you can see our fin is going to follow it. Now, within reason, if you go too far, it's, you know, you just need more edges to, to get that curve to follow. But you can see I have that flexibility. Um, so I might not do that because I, I would probably know that beforehand. But let's say I select everything and I decide I want the whole thing to be a little bit fatter. So I can scale, uh, shift X, I can scale it up or scale it down and that's going to follow. Okay. Now, if I scale this down too far, you'll notice that it like curves in. Whoops. You'll see that the fin right here is kind of curving in. Uh, and that's because this loop right here is not changing. So I'm going to go back to my vertex group options and I'm going to set the weight to 0.5, so half influence and click Assign. And you can see that's just going to sharpen that up a little bit. I don't want full influence, otherwise it's going to be right on top, but if, with partial influence, that's going to work out great. Um, 
the other thing that you can do just to ensure success is just make sure that these are starting above the final form. And that's just going to make sure things are as clean as they can be. Uh, right here, you can see if you're not getting you know, quite as much deformation as you want, you can always add another edge loop in here, which you pr should probably do anyway for the subsurface modifier. And we'll add one in the center. And that's, um, you know, once you add those vertices to the group, then they will, uh, you know, follow the, cur the contour a little bit better. So that's the sort of thing um, that I ended up going through and doing with all of these parts. All right, this one also has a shrink wrap group. So if we go and add a uh, our shrink wrap modifier, set the target to the body. Whoops. Set the target to the body and set the vertex group. And then we'll also you know, shade smooth and add our subsurface modifier earlier in the stack. Okay, we get those same uh, same results. Let's take that and apply that in a more complex situation. So we have, uh, actually we'll ignore that. We'll just focus on the main body. Okay, so we've got these little orb things happening here in the main body. Um, let's add those. So we can see from reference that there's gonna be four of these orbs. Uh, instead of manually modeling and placing them, we're only going to make one, and then we will use a combination of an array modifier and a shrink wrap modifier to get them in place. So, first thing we need to do, I'm going to select both of these edge loops. Okay, I'm going to uh, turn off my reference just for now. I'm going to hit Shift S, and that's going to snap. I want to snap my cursor to selected. You can also go to the, again, I never remember where this is. It's in the mesh menu. Yep, mesh, snap, cursor to selected. Okay. Then I'm going to go into object mode because these are going to be separate objects. Shift A, add, uh, and we're going to add a, yeah, we can add a sphere. All right. Now this is way too big and way too detailed. So I'm going to bring the segments down to 6 and the rings down to 6. That'll work. And the radius to 0.1. We'll adjust that probably some more, but for now that works. Okay. I hit 1 to go into front view and go into edit mode and wireframe. I'm now I I'm going to move this in object mode or Excuse me. I'm going to move this in edit mode because I want the origin to stay in that spot. I'm going to move it up. I'll just move it up here for now. I'm going to delete the bottom half of the vertices. Let's get rid of those. So we now we have half a sphere. Now what we need to do, I'm going to scale it down a little bit. Scale it down vertically. Okay, so I'm just going for the little kind of a cap shape. Uh, you can turn your... your reference on if you want to use that um, you know it's a pretty simple shape so I don't really need it once I have it where I want it then I will bring it down and rotate it now I waited to do this until after I applied the subsurface modifier to the gun body because you can see if I turn that off that position changes so I want to get as close as possible, so that's why I waited until now to do this. I'll leave it hovering above it a little bit, but something like that. Okay, you see I don't have a ton of detail on it. You don't need it. Uh, there are triangles at the top, but that should be fine. If it's not, we can always make adjustments. But So once I have that in position, I'll bring it down a little bit more. Okay. I'm going to, in wireframe, I'm going to select all of these bottom vertices. Hit period on the number pad to focus on it. All right. And I'm going to 
make that a vertex group. We'll call this again body shrink wrap. You can use vertex groups for a number of things, so that's why I'm both including what it's going to be shrink wrapped to and why I'm um, adding it. Click assign. All right, go back to our modifiers. I'm going to first add a subsurface modifier. Um, this one will be fine at two. Go to shade smooth. And now we can add our shrink wrap modifier. And set our target to the body and our vertex group to shrink wrap. All right, so you can see now we're getting this weird bowing. Um, there's a couple things that we can do to alleviate that. The first, we can change the mode from nearest surface point to project. And that's odd. That's a really odd. I don't know why that's happening. Let's try to rotate that maybe. Maybe we'll scale it down a little bit. Huh. Um... No. Okay. We go Z axis, maybe. No, we don't want that. Let's see. Why is that being so okay? I guess it's not doing that anymore, but. I think I know what's going on. Well, I don't know why this thing was happening. Sometimes this is a weird thing. Um, so one thing that you can do is make sure that you're getting this as close to the surface you want to project onto as possible. That will help. Um, but so now we're getting this pinching. So we just need to add another edge here. So if I'm going to add a little edge here, that's eh, still kind of being weird. We might need to just go back to nearest surface point. Yeah, that's going to be a little bit better. Um, I can take this new edge loop, and we will give that partial weight in the uh, vertex group. And then I'm also going to take this last edge, and I'm going to extrude it. Oops, extrude. Right-click to keep it in the same spot and just scale it in. Now it's going to give me a little bit of a lip here. It's going to just going to make that feel a little bit more real. So once I have that in place, we'll call that good. Uh, you should make sure we name this. So we'll say this um, gun body front rivet for back of a, lack of a better term. Uh, now we just need to do our array modifier. So I've got this my. Uh, my 3D cursor is still in the same point, which if we look at it from the side view, you can see is exactly in the center of, uh, you know, in the radial center, which is what we want. So I'm going to hit Shift A and add in an empty, and I'll do a little, uh, I'll do the arrows, doesn't really matter. All right, and so we want uh, a total of four of these. So I'm going to, uh, you know, four over 360 degrees, it's going to be 90 degrees, so I'm going to rotate around the x-axis, 90 degrees, hit return. And that's all I need to do with this. Um, you can go into the empty properties and you can bring that size down to like 0.1 if you want and go into your, uh, what is this panel? This is the uh, object properties. I like to set my viewport display to in front so that it's always in front. It's just a, it's a personal preference of, of viewport cleanliness and displaying not required by any means, but it's there if you want to do it. Um, and then we're going to name this empty. So this is going to be, um, this name is going to get a little bit long, but we're going to call it gun body front rivet. And I'm going to put empty at the front. So all the empties will be grouped together. Empty gun body front rivet. Okay. I go back to my rivet. We're going to add in another modifier. Add modifier array. We're going to turn off relative offset. Turn on object offset. Set that object to our empty. And set our count to four. 
and now we have all of our rivets. Okay, and again, because we're using shrink wrap, if we want to make this, maybe we want to make it concave, we can do that, and we don't have to readjust the rivets. Um, actually, I kind of like that too. Yeah, we'll keep it. Um, yeah, so you can see how these these modifiers start to stack up and still give you a lot of uh, flexibility in the in the process. Before I do the last <laughs> thing, uh, so we've got this little band bracket thing here, uh, and I just wanted to real quick I'll bring up a reference so you can see it a little bit clearer. Okay, so we have this band that follows the contour of two pieces. So just to show you real quick how I would do that. Um, on this piece, I lined up these edges so that they are defining that band. So I can select, go into wireframe, select all of these faces. I can shift D to duplicate them. And then P and separate uh, by selection. Okay, so once I do that, uh, oops, go to object mode, just select that. So these, this is already um, kind of in the right spot. Now we can take these bottom edges, oops, edge mode. I'm going to delete this edge, so X and dissolve that edge. I'm going to grab this one and I'm going to hit E to extrude it. I'm going to hit Shift X so that it doesn't move in that left and right direction. All right, I'll even I'll split my view so you can kind of see this a little bit better. So I'll go into front view here. So I'm going to extrude this, and I don't want this to move in the X direction, so I'm going to hit Shift X. And now no matter where I move it, it's going to stay in line. I'll just extrude that out a few times. Okay. And then let's look at our shrink wrap modifier. And because that bottom edge was already on the shrink wrap, it's actually working out. Um, but otherwise, what you could do is delete that shrink wrap modifier. Go to edit mode, select all these bottom vertices. Not that one. Add in a new vertex group. Okay. And apply it. So now only these bottom faces will be down there. These top faces are not in that group. I'm going to wireframe here. I'm also going to collapse that back down. So I'll select all of those. Use my circle select and middle click and drag to deselect those ones. Okay. And I'm just going to scale it up. Well, I won't scale it up. I'm going to move it in the Y direction and move it in the Z direction just a little bit so that's not perfectly on top. Uh, from there, we can add our... I actually want this... Yeah, okay, that's in the right order. Um, we can add a solidify modifier. to give it some thickness. We want to go out. Turn on even thickness and high quality normals. And then a couple of control loops here. And we can see we've this isn't going all the way through, which is a problem, probably caused by the solidify modifier. I'm going to undo that. No, it's still not going all the way through. Might be a normals issue. Go to mesh normals. We calculate outside. I bet that was it. Nope, that wasn't it. Fine, as I have this extra geometry in here that is in the way and making weird things happen. So let's get rid of all of those. There we go. And that should work a lot better. Now I need to go back up to my mesh normals. And recalculate outside. That's better. Okay, now we can add that solidify modifier back in. High quality normals, even thickness. Add our control loops. Like 
that. Okay. Get out of local view. And now we have a bracket that conforms to the shape of our gun. So that's how you'd make those. There's a number of those that occur throughout um, this piece, or at least three of them anyway. I guess three is a number, so that works. Um, yeah, so that's that part. Now, last thing that I wanted to show. Oop. Don't worry about that. There we go. All right, so the last thing I want to show is these little pipey bits. Um, and if I turn on my reference, I'm just going to do this on one, and you can kind of interpolate the rest. So we're going to focus on this pipe right here. And there's a couple of ways, you, as usual, that you can do it. You can just take a circle or a cylinder and extrude it and manually move it. That can get, get tricky to keep, especially these bends, smooth and even and circular all the way through. Um, and there's an easier way to do it, so I'm going to show you the easier way to do it. And that's with curves. Uh, also, just noticed this, I need to turn on optimal display. Okay. So, curves. Here's how that's going to work. I'm going to just put my 3D cursor out in front of the gun, doesn't matter where. And I'm going to hit Shift A and add in a curve bezier. Okay. This works like a curve or a path in Illustrator um, or After Effects or any other curve drawing tool you know of. It creates this little curve. If I hit Tab to go into edit mode, and I'm going to go into local view so we can just focus on this. It's two points. There is a direction to it. In this case, it doesn't matter. In other cases, it does matter. So that's what these arrows are representing. Um, but it's two points. And then each point, you can rotate around. And you can scale. And the size of the handles will affect how smooth that curve is. OK? So all we need to do is make this curve in the shape of the pipe. So I'm going to get out of local view. I'm going to hide the reference. Because we know, well, we, let's take a look at the reference here real quick. Okay, so the pipe is going to go out from the top here. It's going to turn roughly 90 degrees up and out and over, and then turn 90 degrees right before. So it's two big bends, and that's all we need to replicate. So we can hide the reference, try to keep this relatively clean. Uh, I want to line this first point up with this face. So I'm going to select. Uh, We'll say this circle. Hit Shift S to snap my cursor to selected. Okay. So my cursor is there. Now I can go back to my curve and select this end point. Shift S again to snap my selection to the cursor. Now that I know that's in the right spot. I'm going to do the same thing with this point. So I'm going to go up to this object. I'm going to go. And I'm going to select these two faces. I could also just select that edge. But Shift S, Snap, Cursor to Selected. And I'll go back to my curve, select that point, Shift S, Snap, Selection to Cursor. All right, so now the curve is going between the two, but not quite in the right direction. So I'm going to select this first, and I'm going to rotate, and I'm going to scale this down. Uh, and I can also, if I hit Alt-R, uh, maybe that won't clear the, uh, clear the rotation. I was hoping that would. Maybe not. We can just kind of rotate it accordingly. Uh, I'm going to scale this one down as well. And I'm going to rotate that. And I'm going to go to the top view and make sure that we're in the right orientation here. Okay, getting close, but not quite there. Let's scale this down. So if you can just select one end of a handle and scale just that end down as well. Um, now we need more control points. And so what we can do is we can subdivide this just like we can in any other edge. So I'm going to right click, subdivide, and uh, I think we will We'll probably need more than three, but let's see how far we can get with just this one. So we'll move this over here. I'm going to rotate it this way. Let's look at it from the side view. We'll rotate it this way and move it up. OK. 
Okay, so we're getting there. We can select this and scale it out on the side view. No, I don't really want to do that. So instead, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this along the x-axis, and then I'm going to extrude that back out in the x-direction. And the reason I did that, instead of just subdividing again, is because I know that these two points now are perfectly in line with each other. And I can scale that down. I'm going to do the same thing up here. We'll scale the, the control point, or the, the handles down a little bit. I'm going to move it along the x-axis, and then extrude it back along the x-axis. There. Okay. So now it's just this piece that we need to worry about. And I'm going to select these two. We'll subdivide. And then in the side view, scale that down a little bit, even that out. So move that up, select this one, kind of rotate that, move that, kind of line those up as best we can. Let's uh, scale that out a little bit. Take a little bit of tweaking here. Not too bad. Let's make sure you're looking at it from multiple angles. Because we do want to roughly keep that. Uh, Flat, so I'm. I keep referring back to my uh, my reference to make sure I'm you know, following the plan. So this looks pretty good. Um, we could maybe. Whoops. Sorry. Got to be in Blender to hit one. There we go. Three. We can maybe make this a little bit closer to the uh, to the surface, but I think we're pretty good there. All right. So once we have that in place. It's a really nice attribute with curves. I go to my curves properties. Uh, and that is you can extrude them. And by default, it'll give you a circle. So in our options here, you can have a 2D or a 3D curve. Um, we've got a render resolution, which is basically how many subdivisions. Uh, we've got a smoothness. We've got a fill mode. But can't really see any of these results until we adjust this geometry here. So if we extrude, uh, actually no, we don't want to extrude, sorry, I always do that. I always think it's extrude, it's not, it's depth. Bevel depth. So if I bring that up, there we go. Now we have a tube, just like that. Um, and you can put in whatever value you think is right, we'll say 0.2. Um, resolution is gonna be the number of subdivisions uh, in the uh, when depth is non-zero, I believe is I gotta remember the resolution. If I go to wireframe, it'll become more obvious. Um, resolution is going to be basically how many subdivisions around the circumference. So if I go to zero, there's just four, All right? Which is actually because you're, you'll probably end up with a subsurface modifier on this anyway. Four is probably enough, but if you want to do a little bit more detail, you can go to one. Uh, and then we also have up here this resolution. Again, wireframe is going to be easier to see. So resolution is up here in the, pre, in the U direction, which is like the length. is going to be how many subdivisions along the length. Um, and it's not just a total of 12. It's, um, I don't know, over how many subdivisions that you have. So they're all relatively evenly spaced. You get a little bit more detail where the, the control points are closer together. Um, this is how you can kind of lay things out. Uh, we don't need to worry about path animation. All right, so once you're happy with that, 
I'll bring that resolution up one just just cuz once you're happy with how this is laid out and I mean we can still make some changes here if we maybe want to rotate that down a little bit go to the top view do something like that okay once we're happy one thing that I would do is um, duplicate it and I'm just gonna move it to my backup uh, layer just so if I do need to make a modification I have the I have that backup because uh, the next step is going to be to take this object and we're going to go to uh, object convert to mesh from curve okay what this is going to do is exactly what you expect and click on that now I can go to edit mode and now it's a mesh object and we can go in and we can actually clean this up a little bit let's say you know I don't need that edge I don't need that edge like that's more edges than I need so I can dissolve those um, if I want this to be a little bit straighter in between I can take some of these middle edges and we can dissolve those and then maybe I'll I mean if I want to give some resolution I can add back what I need um, so I can make those adjustments accordingly next dissolve those edges Okay, this way I know those will be straight. Uh, and then we can also continue to add in details. So in front view, if we bring our reference back up, you see that there is, well, it's not really there, um, but let's pretend there is. If we want to add a little bit of extra detail, we can add an edge loop there, grab that face loop, extrude, right click to keep it in the same spot, and then scale, shift X, Right, and start kind of figuring out what that mechanical connection is going to look like. We can give it a subsurface modifier, and then of course we need to you know, add our control loops there so it keeps looking as good as we want it to. Okay, but that's a really easy way to start adding these pipes. Actually, this probably should have gone in more. And further follow the the curve but you get the idea um, it's a really fast way to do it and can give you some detail very quickly especially when you've got an object like this that has pipes kind of going all over